Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do an update on what is going on up in the stratosphere. Now over the last couple of weeks we've been putting updates out about the risk of a sudden stratospheric warming and we have seen some quite big changes over the past few days. Now, earlier this week, around the Christmas point, we were looking at the risk of a major southern stratospheric warming with a full reversal of the zonal mean winds, which could give the risk of some extremely cold weather or at least a higher risk of some extremely cold weather through the middle to second half of January. However, in the past couple of days, we have seen the models back off from a major sudden stratospheric warming, instead favouring more of a minor sudden stratospheric warming. So the stratosphere is still going to warm up tremendously. The zone mean winds are going to weaken tremendously, but they're not going to quite go into reversal status. And there is the risk still of seeing the polar vortex get under some major strain. And a few models are still showing a bit of a split appearing, but nowhere near as many as earlier this week. So we are seeing a bit of a back off, which does mean that the, the, the risk of some severe cold weather has decreased slightly as we progress through January. But the sudden stratospheric warming hasn't disappeared at all. It's just no longer looking likely to be a major event. Now, many of you will be watching the daily videos, and of course, we are looking at some pretty cold weather as we progress into early January. That cold weather that could be arriving through the first five to ten days of January is not directly linked to what is going on in the stratosphere. The longevity of that cold weather and the blocking patterns that look likely to develop could be amplified in the longer term by a sudden stratospheric warming. But this uh, sort of change within the last few days isn't going to affect what we're seeing in the short range and mid range models over the next week or two. So I know a lot of people will be having questions about that. This is looking at more of the middle to end of January. So could still bring a colder risk, but at this stage, we're not looking at a major warming. And we'll show you the difference through these various charts. So to remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Now, if you start on the latest GFS, again, this is one deterministic model. So I wouldn't take this too literally. But this does give a good overview of what's going to be happening over the course of the next week or two up in the stratosphere. Remember, what happens in the stratosphere normally takes around a week to two weeks, maybe even longer sometimes, to propagate through the troposphere. So a major warming right now would affect us probably early to middle of January, the major warming or minor sun stratospheric warming we're looking at occurring perhaps within the next sort of 10 days is likely to affect us middle to second half of January. So you can already see a warming is taking place up towards Siberia here, but the polar vortex is still centered over the North Pole and is still relatively strong. But over the coming days, the next sort of few days, it starts to get displaced because it is very cold still and it is fairly circular. And it is still positioned close to the North Pole. But you can see as we head into the first couple of days of January, it gets displaced quite significantly. and actually sits over the top of the UK. So there is the risk of seeing some more of those nacreous clouds that we have seen over the past couple of weeks. Uh, again, they form when the temperature is around the minus 80 degree mark. And you can see the minus 80 degree mark is going to be over the top of the UK. So there's the risk of seeing those, uh, those polar clouds once again. Again, these are very high up in the atmosphere, so do not think by any means minus 80 degrees is coming anywhere near the UK. But as we progress into the first full week of January, you can see where the sort of the big warming starts to occur, where these very warm temperatures getting up to close towards freezing up in the stratosphere just does start to penetrate into the Arctic. You can see the North Pole, exactly where the reading's taking place for the zone we winds and for the temperatures up in the stratosphere, it's just to the north of Svalbard, these islands, just where the cursor is. So you see major warming taking place, but it isn't a complete reversal in the zonal mean winds. These, this warming does decrease in strength. It doesn't quite displace the polar vortex completely out of the Arctic. You can see there is huge strain in just over a week's time as we head into the 6th and 7th of January. And you can see big elongation in the polar vortex. And this is where some models still have a bit of a split appearing. If we put on the 10 HPA wind speeds, you can see it really stretched out. And this is where we could see a bit of a split occurring. You see already see slight kind of two lobes of polar vortex starting to form, but this latest run doesn't fully split and actually reabsorbs this larger sector over Scandinavia, does reabsorb this stretched out bit out towards Northeast Canada. 
Eventually, into the longer range, the Polar Vortex does maintain fairly weak strength. It does rebound in its positioning, does return back to the Arctic. So we are likely to see a rebound in those zonal mean winds, but really not getting much, uh, still relatively uh, low, uh, well below average. And then we could see another minor warming in the longer term. So there is the risk of potentially seeing uh, a major sun stress rate warming, perhaps again later in the month, um, because of course the polar vortex is going to be very weak. Uh, a weaker warming could do even more damage to the polar vortex. So again, this is one deterministic run, so I wouldn't take it too literally, but again, it does highlight what is looking likely over the next week or two, with the polar vortex coming under tremendous strain, but not quite breaking like we thought earlier this week. Now, this is well illustrated if we have a look at the zonal mean winds. Um, this is the line chart showing you the historical values, which is the grey, the light grey, um, the light grey is showing you where it's been before, the darker grey is sort of one standard deviation, and the black line is the traditional um, sort of average zonal mean wind. So you can see pretty much where we are right now is when uh, sort of historically the polar vortex has been its strongest, but it's about to see a massive plunge, and you see most of the GFS ensembles take the polar vortex down to around 10 metres per second, maybe towards 5 metres per second. This time of year, it should be close to 40 metres per second and has been seen up towards 60, 70 or 80 metres per second. So it just shows you it is a tremendous decrease, but it's not get quite, getting quite towards that zero or negative mark, which is required for a major warming. You see, most of the ensemble members do rebound, but really only still below average. And as you saw from the GFS, it does produce another warming later on, which again could reduce those winds further. And we could just see a quite a prolonged period of below average polar vortex strength, which will have a downwelling effect. And of course, if we do see another major warming later on in the season, it could break the polar vortex uh, completely. Uh, whereas if it was in a year where the polar vortex was very strong, a warming might not have too much of an effect. Now, if we do have a look at sort of a cross section, this is of the latest GFS that come out and you can see on the left is the actual zonal mean winds up high up in the, uh, across the stratosphere all the way down to the troposphere and then on the right is the anomaly so on the left anything sort of yellow orange and red is a strong westerly flow green is in and around neutral so not really anything too major but you can see sort of lighter greens more westerly and then blue is reversing to an easterly you see at the moment, very strong up in the stratosphere. The stratosphere is around the 1 HPA to 30 HPA level. This is where we're looking at for the stratosphere. Um, you can see it's very strong. But over the coming days, as we head into early January, huge weakening in those zonal mean winds. And you can see it has, does actually reverse here. Again, does depend exactly where you're taking that uh, measure. But the official measurement right over the North Pole doesn't look likely to reverse. That's where we historically take the value for uh, a sun stress rate warming event. This, of course, taking it from 60 degrees north, which isn't quite directly over the North Pole. It's kind of very close to where the Arctic Circle takes place. But it is close to the North Pole, but not directly. And that's why this is showing a easterly flow, but we're not officially likely to see that. You can see a bit of a rebound, going back up to 30, 40 metres per second, and then another weakening again. We're not seeing massive uh, propagation through the atmosphere yet uh, in terms of that strength of zonal mean winds. But if you look on the right hand side, you can see throughout the whole stratosphere and stretching into the troposphere, definitely a lot of blues indicating a negative anomaly and generally weaker zonal mean winds. Again, this is for one deterministic GFS run, so it is going to have a lot of variability. But again, it does give you a good overview of what we should be expecting, especially these values in the troposphere down towards 300 HPA, 500 HPA and lower does change a lot depending on each run. You know, a massive Scandinavian high and a huge uh, sort of Greenland high, we'd see a big negative anomaly here, more of a westerly flow, we'd see uh, more of a, a red anomaly. And we, we've seen how quickly those operational runs can change. So again, we're more looking up high up in the stratosphere and we'll have to see what pr propagating effects of this minor sudden stratospheric warming will have in the coming days. Of course, we also need to have a look at different models. So if we do go to the ECMWF, which many would say is a 
better model than the GFS. I would probably agree with that. The GFS sometimes gives a more extravagant charts and the better ones to report on because it's a little bit more interesting sometimes. Going into the longer range gives some quite wacky runs and sometimes can jump, jump the gun and be correct. But majority of the time, the EC and the OEF is the steady run, the one that is more, more than likely not uh, correct um, and is normally more moderate. When the ESM and OEF starts showing some very cold charts or very warm charts, then attention is drawn. So I'd say the ESM and OEF is normally, uh, maybe would regard a better model. And you can see these are the anomaly charts over the course of the next couple of weeks. And these are the uh, and, uh, these are the anomalies from the ensemble, so this doesn't. This is not just one deterministic run. And you can see for the next, first week of January, we've got a very big warming on the Siberian and Alaskan side of the North Pole, with a big negative anomaly on the UK European side. So very similar to the GFS run, we'll be seeing a displacement event and perhaps a brief split in that polar vortex for a time, maybe. The week following that, still quite a strong uh, uh, negative anomaly there in terms of the temperatures. Oh, sorry, positive anomaly in terms of temperatures here. Uh, so warmer than average temperatures. And then into the third full week of January, still a relatively strong positive anomaly. That does mean that even though we're not seeing a major warming here, this minor warming looks like it's going to hang around for a while, i.e. the polar vortex, the stratospheric polar vortex, isn't going to recover particularly quickly. And then finally, into the last full week of January, still a minor warming, and into the first week of February, more of a neutral anomaly with some blues starting to develop. So perhaps a little bit more of a recovery there, but still showing good three or four weeks of above average temperatures high up in the stratosphere, which will definitely have propagating impacts throughout uh, the atmosphere, potentially encouraging more blocking patterns um, as that polar vortex, that strong westerly wind high up in the atmosphere, gets disrupted preventing or limiting the strengthening of the jet stream, allowing more wavy patterns and other areas and other weather patterns to influence us. Sometimes, especially in the winter months, we can see the polar vortex just overwhelm everything. A lot of other climate drivers would suggest perhaps some amplification, perhaps a high pressure system building in, but the jet stream just flatten it out with a very strong westy winds throughout the atmosphere. Well, we've got a pattern like this uh, that looks like into set up where the polar vortex is extremely weak, whether it's a major warming or not. Regardless, it's looking extremely weak. It is going to have a, a strong downwelling effect where we are likely to see uh, the jet stream become a lot more wavy and a lot more prone to amplification and blocking patterns, especially without looking likely to set up in the next week or two. We could be in for a relatively cold January. I wouldn't say snowy, I wouldn't say wintry, I wouldn't say bitterly cold, but definitely a below average January does look like really quite possible and potentially even pretty probable with what we're looking at for the first week or two of January. And then, of course, potentially the effects of this minor SSW. And finally, if we look at the East MWF, these are the line charts. So very similar to what we looked in the GFS, but a little bit more zoomed in. And you can see very strong at the moment, uh, or I say very strong, but pretty much around average, around that 40 metres per second point. See, big drop. Uh, early this week, we did see it get to zero. Uh, so major sun stress for warming territory. And that's what we thought could occur. But you see definitely moderated now with most ensemble members around that 5 to 10 metres per second point. A bit of a recovery as we head into the middle of January, but then staying fairly weak and some runs actually go again for another major warming, getting us down to the zero level again. So you can see the East of the F is similar to the GFS, has a bit of a rebounding effect, but it does go further into the extended range. It goes about six weeks ahead, and you can see, even as we head into early February, majority of ensemble members here still have a pretty weak polar vortex. So it is looking, continuing to be very interesting over the course, uh, of course, the next couple of weeks. No major sudden stratospheric warming looks likely now in the near future, potentially, as we head further into January. Uh, it is possible, as said earlier in the video, a very weak polar vortex is prone to more attacks by a uh, warming so we, we could see that later into january but this initial period into early january now doesn't look likely to see a major warming still we are going to see a minor warming it is still going to have impacts maybe not as quite as potent maybe not quite as clear cut as a major warming and a split in the polar vortex but nonetheless as i said a few minutes ago it could allow a pretty cool, if not cold, January to develop. The next week or two looks pretty cold. Uh, and I said that's got nothing really to do with the polar vortex at this stage or this SSW. But it could allow 
more of those blocking patterns to dominate and develop as we progress through towards the end of the month. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on it, of course. Uh, any changes, I'll make, I'll make sure you keep updated uh, with it. Uh, and as I said, we'll just have to see exactly what happens with this. But it is going to be a very exciting model watching over the course of the next few weeks. Because not only have we got naturally some cold weather coming up, but also we've got this coming into play. And as I said, it could give rise to numerous colder snaps or potentially just generally prolonged colder weather. And of course, with prolonged cold weather, it is going to bring the risk in the coldest month of the year of potentially quite a bit of wintriness, especially further northwards. This upcoming January could be very wintry in the north and dare I say further south as well. It could be pretty wintry as well. We've been due uh, a, a, a cold and snowy spell. We have seen cold, colder spells last winter, but None of those spells were tremendously snowy, widely, locally very snowy, but not widely. So we are due a very cold and snowy period or snowy month. Potentially this January has the ingredients, but we will just have to see. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have another update out tomorrow and hopefully got a bit more clarification from the ensembles with what's coming up over the next week or two. But I'll see you again for another video soon.